Hey everyone, welcome back to Insulation 00, and given the recent videos that I've made on Sergeant Johnson, specifically the Orion candidates and kind of a an honorary to Sergeant Johnson, alongside some recent tweets by Marty O'Donnell, and a very recent video by Hidden Xperia regarding Sergeant Johnson, I'm dusting off and revisiting a script I made practically at the very start of my channel, back when I was still using a potato as a microphone. The video that I originally posted about Sergeant Johnson perhaps being alive was actually script number 16 of my Law and Theory series, which basically means it happened within a few weeks of the channel actually starting to grow substantially. In either case, it's time to revisit Sergeant Johnson and talk about how perhaps he could be alive, how perhaps he should have been brought back into Halo, and maybe looking into the future on how he at least could be brought back into Halo. So, let's roll the intro. So my guy Hidden Xperia made a video basically talking about the return of Sergeant Johnson. Now he specifically points out that really there's no reason why we can't have kind of prequel games that see Sergeant Johnson coming back into the Halo universe. I mean yes he died at the end of Halo 3, but why haven't we received a Contact Harvest game yet? I mean I'm completely on board with that idea. And really when it boils down to I mean Sergeant Johnson fought alongside the Master Chief during Silent Storm, the very campaign that Master Chief became Master Chief. That would be a hell of a game. So I'm already totally on board with that, and he does reference that he's kind of on the fence as to whether or not it's a good idea to bring Sergeant Johnson quote-unquote back from the dead, although he did reference again that many of the decisions that were made in Halo 3's campaign have kind of retroactively been, well, undone by new law, and also briefly explains the actual development process of Halo 3 and some of the things going on behind the scenes that led to these decisions. I strongly recommend you go across and watch his video, it's linked in the description down below. Now in my recent video, the Sergeant Johnson, the life and death of a legend, I actually got a comment that is pinned from Marty O'Donnell himself saying, for the record, I think he's still alive. Now that video went live on February 17th, 2023. In December of 2022, just two months beforehand, he put a post up on his Twitter feed of the great David Sully, the voice actor behind Sergeant Johnson, and then put a couple of lead-up comments to that video saying, so he made it off the first Halo, why couldn't he have done it again? I didn't kill him, 343 guilty spark, and then in commas, killed him. Indeed, even my original video, Could Johnson Be Alive, which I posted on October the 3rd, 2018, I actually put that around Twitter and Frank O'Connor responded to it. And although his response was steeped in sarcasm, he at least acknowledged the potential for Sergeant Johnson to be alive given the law that is available to us. It's at this point that I kind of feel like I need to just readdress that earlier video. Now the original script and the original video actually only topped out about a five minute video and if you consider back in the day my outros were about two minutes. I'm pretty sure I can literally reread this script ad verbatim and get it out in a couple of minutes, so bear with me while I quickly do that, but if you want to skip it, then here's the timestamp to go to. So the script is as follows. In this episode we explore whether it would be canonically possible to bring Sergeant Johnson back from the dead, so to speak. In Halo Wars 2, Sergeant Johnson appears as a leader, arguably just for gameplay mechanics. We saw him die on installation 04B above the Ark in Halo 3 right before it fired. There can't be a law reason that he could be alive. Or can there? Halo has a teleportation grid. Evidently it can be accessed by any being with the know-how and enough energy to do so, just like Cortana does in Halo CE by using Chief's Mjolnir power supply. So how does this apply to bringing Sergeant Johnson back from the dead? Well. 343 Guilty Spark blasts him with a monitor beam, causing Johnson to collapse. It's worth noting the beam didn't pass through him, and marine armour is actually designed with the same refractive coating that Mjolnir is. So the blast, while it certainly would have seriously burned his flesh, it wasn't immediately fatal of an injury, but he eventually quote unquote dies with Chief knelt by his side. I believe it's a little bit more like he simply slipped into unconsciousness due to the immense pain and shock. 
Chief activates Halo and runs clear as the control room begins to shake itself apart and we see Johnson's body slide off and fall into the pits of the control room to either be fatally injured by the fall or destroyed by the Halo firing. Unless Mendicant Bias decided to intervene. Mendicant Bias spoke to Chief through the terminal on Halo from his concealed location upon the Ark and was aware of his activity on the ring. He will also have known about Johnson. Mendicant could have activated the Halo teleportation grid and teleported Johnson in an unconscious, wounded state to a secure location within the Ark, maybe even before he fell deep enough into the control room to hit anything. How about healing though? Well, there are two ways Mendicant Bias could have healed Johnson. Tragic Solitude is the monitor of the Ark. Since the end of Halo 3, Tragic has been in close contact with other humans but never mentioned Johnson. However, he did keep a severely wounded Marine by the name of Bobby Kodiak alive in a kind of grotesque, part cyborg kind of way. Mendicant could have done the same to Johnson. But better still, Huragok, or engineers, can rebuild technology at incredible speed. Well, there is a special kind of life worker Huragok which can repair organics. One such Huragok repaired the two broken legs of Spartan III Olivia within the caverns under Gao. It is entirely possible as the Ark's habitable environment was established as per the Librarian's request, and the Librarian is a life worker, that a population of life worker Huragok likely live on the Ark. So, a quick recap. Johnson was injured badly, but likely not fatally due to the beam not penetrating completely and his armour being refractive. He was likely burned badly and went into shock, then losing consciousness. His body could have then been teleported by Mendicant Bias off of the Halo Ring and into a secured location within the Ark, where he could have set Lifeworker Huragok upon the task of healing Johnson. Halo Wars 2 comes around and perhaps Johnson found out that the Spirit of Fire was nearby, got into contact somehow, and now he is aboard the Spirit of Fire, helping fight back the Banished. Boom. Johnson is back in the game. Does that sound plausible? <sighs> okay, so that was the original video script. And it does still stand true. The lore that surrounds the Hello Universe, the different things that are in place, do kind of allow for at least a slim possibility that Johnson could still be alive. I mean, it is pretty clear that... I mean, Chief took three blasts from 343 Guilty Spark and... It didn't really affect, I mean, it, it crippled Chief to the floor, but it didn't really affect him per se. The Arbiter took a long, sustained blast from 343 Guilty Spark, and the Arbiter was perfectly fine. Johnson took a relatively short blast to the chest, and somehow he died? Again, totally not ruling out the severe burns that he would have got as a consequence, and that the pain, the shock, yeah, that could have made him pass out. But Sergeant Johnson is an Orion candidate, he's a Spartan 1, he's got augmentations. By rights, there's a decent chance he survived that. Hell, he survived worse odds. Sergeant, we're surrounded! God damn it, Jenkins! Fire your weapons! There are too many, sir! Don't even think about it, Marines! Me and I sure as hell don't like you. But if we don't do something, Mr. Mohawk's gonna activate this ring, and we're all gonna die. Oh, come on. Impress me. Stop! You imbecile! He wants you to kill him. We know that the firing of Installation 04B didn't actually cause as much damage to the Ark as originally predicted as Flood survived on the Ark and had to be contained by the Sentinels and an energy barrier. There was still life on the Ark when the Banished and the Spirit of Fire arrived. Mendicant Bias is present on the Ark. There are Life Worker Huragok in existence. The teleportation grid exists. All of this points towards a canonical way in which Sergeant Johnson could have survived. Now, again, games since have kind of tried to fill in the void left by Johnson. This is, again, covered in Hidden Experience video. Halo 4 kind of had Sarah Palmer. Halo 5 kind of did the same with a much larger and inflated cast. Halo Infinite kind of did it with Fernando Esparza. But 
no nothing's quite filled that void that Johnson has left. Had this law canonical way in which Johnson could have survived been explored sooner, they could have actually made it canon that Johnson survived and is now with the Spirit of Fire on the Ark. Hell, we've even discovered since that there are other Ark portals that exist around the galaxy that go to the Ark. There's one on Reach. Johnson, even if he didn't link up with the Spirit of Fire, could have accessed one of those portals and then come out on Reach. And upon navigating his way back to the surface and linking back up with the UNSC, he could have quite easily been factored back into active service and become a Spartan 4. Now imagine, imagine the different kind of reception that that would have had in Halo 4 if in this cutscene, where the Chief is waiting at the door and the four Spartan Fords move past him and secure the area, and then he's approached from the darkness by Sarah Palmer. Imagine if it wasn't Palmer that approached him, but Johnson as a Spartan Four. I guarantee you, if that would have taken place, the reception of Halo 4 would have been completely different. But even aside from that, is there a way that Johnson could still be factored into future Halo games? Well, yes, we could have prequel games, we could have Contact Harvest, we could have Silent Storm, we could have those extrapolated out into games and actually have Johnson, a younger Johnson, fighting in the Human Covenant War once again. That, that could be a thing. But is there a way that he could be factored into the current events of the Halo universe, into the Halo Infinite, Zeta Halo kind of era of Halo? Yes. Yes, there could be. There was a kind of cut ending to Halo Infinite that showed Chief and Fernando Esparza looking out of the window of the Pelican in response to something outside that got them excited. Now, it could theoretically be possible that that was the Spirit of Fire arriving at Zeta Halo. Again, Spirit of Fire was at the Ark. If Johnson could have survived by being teleported off of Installation 04B and then being healed by life worker Huragok and then finding its way to the Spirit of Fire crew, it's entirely possible that Sergeant Johnson could be factored into future Halo campaigns and link up with the Chief once more alongside Red Team. He wouldn't be a Spartan 4, but hey, there's still time for that. He is a Spartan 1 after all. Hell, that could be a hell of an end to the next campaign, so to speak, is that Johnson and Red Team help Chief deal with whatever the threat is at that time. Finally, maybe the Infinity sister ship arrives, the the Eternity, or hell, they just get onto the Spirit of Fire and they, they leave and return to UNSC controlled space. And when they arrive, Chief could be present as Johnson is put through the Spartan 4 augmentation procedures. And maybe, in a post-credit cutscene, Johnson could emerge wearing his own suit of Mjolnir, walking up to the Chief, and hell, that could then pave the way for multiplayer seasons where Johnson's involved in the narrative, or it could pave the way for future campaigns. I mean, again, we're, there's, no, there's no secret. We're going to be waiting quite a long time for the next campaign to come out. There's no two ways about it. But in using the Unreal Engine and these canon narrative lore reasons as to how things could happen in a certain order, there's really no excuse now to not bring Johnson back into the mainline lore. And I don't know about you, but there's nothing I can think of off the top of my head that will get the community, the Halo fandom in general, quite as excited as Johnson re-emerging and becoming a Spartan. That's just creme de la creme. That, that has to happen. I can't see a reason as to why that shouldn't happen. And they've got enough time now to actually make it happen and happen in a decent way. So, yeah, I'm, I'm getting off script and rather excited here. Put your comments uh, down below as to whether or not you like this idea or you don't like this idea. If you think it's possible, if you don't think it's possible, just give me your thoughts. Let's get a narrative going. Again, make sure you go across and watch Hidden Xperia's video, and until next time. Thanks for watching. If I could respectfully ask, if you enjoyed this video, consider hitting the subscribe button and the little bell icon so you're told the second a new video hits the shelves. Hit this video with a like if you enjoyed, and if not, it's not a problem. And be sure to pop a comment below to throw me an idea on what you want to see next. Massive thanks to my awesome patrons, Spartan10148, the Metarch of my facility, Falcon, Prophet, Leon, Sylphia, Mikhail, and Irrefutable, the monitors of the array. 
Darian, Flaming Halo, Cameron, Spartan0137, The Cave Potato, Andrew, Shia, Dakota, and Ghost, my diligent submonitors, my fleet of Strato Sentinels, and my loyal enforcers, and all other patrons who have supported the channel and helped keep the domain operational. Huge props and recognition to Todd Morrison, Spartan137, Wesley Stuckey, and Jacob Kemp for jumping on as Tier 0 Transcentient YouTube members. You guys are epic. Shout out to John for reasons. And if you want to help support the channel and score yourself tons of perks and merch, head over to Patreon or consider becoming a YouTube member. Links, as ever, are in the description. Much love. Take it easy, everyone, and find peace in the domain. <laughs>